What up, everybody? Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you are tuned in, turn up, dude. Podcast. Yeah, hopefully this is something y'all enjoy. This is just kind of something that new that we want to try. Whether it be put it on YouTube, Spotify, I'm sure we'll put it on all that stuff. But like, obviously, it'd be cool for that stuff. You know, if we did like a weekly episode. I mean, there's so much stuff that we could talk about, and because I feel like right now we're kind of like limited to like how much content we can put on Instagram, uh, which is fine. We put a lot of content on Instagram, as you guys know, but. This will just allow us to like interact with you guys more. Um, have really cool people on it too, like to talk to me. Like there's a bunch of cool guys um, in Atlanta who I would love to like talk to, have a competition with, and I think it'd be really entertaining. Um, but also just like kind of give more insight on like what we do. Like I know for this first one, we want to talk about like our background. And it's like so many times we get DMs from people just asking us random things, like whether it be, hey, I'm just starting, like how do y'all source? What do y'all source is like, like do you have any tips on curation? Do you have any tips on like social media marketing? Like what should I put? Like should I do Instagram ads, Facebook ads? So like I know we've gotten tons of DMs about that stuff. And like we love to help y'all. We love to help anybody. I mean, bro, like I say that, like we still need help. I mean, um, but we love to, we love to, um, give any advice. Like that's definitely not gatekept at all. <laughs> it's not gatekept at all. Like first, like I understand, like you don't want to give away your sources. Like that's whatever. I understand that. I don't know. I feel like the vintage community can be really gatekeepy sometimes, especially over, especially over sources, which I understand, which I understand 100%. I mean, you got to put food in your mouth. I get it. I get it. You got to feed yourself with like other random things too. I don't know if y'all experienced that too either, but I just feel like the vintage community can be totally gatekeepy kind of like the general vibe around it and it's kind of like i don't know it's kind of uncomfortable so we don't want to be like that so we, we want to be like you know as open as possible when it comes to that stuff so also we're going to talk about that um what are we going to talk about we're going to talk about this custom job we got coming up as you see i got them on got them next to me um we got this we just dropped this really sick custom job which we're hyped on but it actually took us so long to do it so i'm going to shed some light on that process because it took a minute it, it took a minute to like start to finish to really lock it in. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the custom drop um, and we're gonna talk about past drops that we've done too. Because especially if you're new, um, you kind of miss the last year and a half of cool custom drops that we've done. And I can kind of shed some light on that and like why we do that, where, where that started, like why we love it so much and why we think our future's in it, whatever. Um, we get a ton of questions about the 30 shooter and the 45 special. If you've been following us for a while, you know we did a 30 shooter. And if you've following us for a while, while, like a long time, then you definitely know that like we've been through multiple formats of drops, so many different formats of dropping items. Like because it like we do it and it feels cool and then it's just like, I don't know, it kind of feels stale and feels like a little played out. So like we're always trying to like switch it up. So right now we're on the 45 special. So like I'll shed some light on that because I, th- I feel like that's been like a pretty crazy process to like work through. Um, and then lastly, uh, we, we wanted to do some viewer questions. We wanted to do, um, you know, y'all sending some literal questions, more specific questions. Um, but I forgot to put something on the story last night. So I'm just going to go ahead, put some, put something on the story now. Um, just to throw that out there. And then if you reply quick enough, then you will get featured. Your question will get featured. But, um, if you see that, then... Hopefully, you, hopefully y'all send a question because we would love to get some answers, but or get some questions to give y'all some answers. But I'll just go ahead and start. Um, enough chit chat. We'll get into the good stuff. So basically, I kind of talked about why we're doing this. Um, you know, obviously content. I feel like it's so trendy right now. You see the podcast clips of people talking with the little subtitles on social media. So like that appeal for sure. But again, like also like we don't know what this could turn into. It could turn into nothing. We could literally just be talking to it. We could literally be talking to ourselves and like five people right now. I mean, and but that's still cool. Like those five people, I hope y'all enjoy it. Um, so like we have no expectations. We're like, dude, let's just do it. Talk about it because we have a lot of stuff to talk about. We have a lot of things we could talk about, you know. And I don't want to be like, oh, we're pioneers. Like we're doing vintage like podcast like we're really the only i'm not saying that at all i'm not saying that at all i'm sure people have done this that i don't even know about you know I, you don't know what you don't know and i'm sure that's an effect but um but i'll talk a little bit about background so if you don't know me you probably have seen me a lot in the videos um but i'm really just one half of the equation here me and my brother it's a family business um you know he i i handle the curation and I handle everything fashion-wise, clothing-wise. And then my brother, 
number n- number guys number guy marketing guy um you know he handles basically all the insides of the business and i think it's a super good duo just because i mean but you can't have two people with the same strengths and qualities i feel like i feel like that's a slept on thing i feel like a lot of the times too in the vintage scene like you see people who are partners who kind of fulfill the same exact role you know when because with me like i didn't want to keep track of numbers figure out how to pay taxes ship everything out like i didn't want to do that i didn't want to do that and it got to the point where like that was taking up a lot of time and i had to start doing that so that's why it's clutch it's clutch to have a person who is skilled in a whole different realm that that you're not you know um so it allows me to like just be fashion stuff like only worry about the clothes worry about the curation worry about sourcing all that stuff all that good stuff worry about everything else so it's a great duo so it's a two-man team it's a two-man team y'all just see me most of the time in the videos um but we've been doing it for a while um you know if you're new we have we always get a bunch of new followers but if y'all are new we've been doing this for probably about like two years um three years and close to um, and we started, you know, bins, you know, probably around COVID time. Uh, I got sent back from college and I go to SCAD, by the way. I don't know if you've heard of that. Savannah College of Art and Design. Shout out to the bees, man. Um, but I go to there. I go uh, for fashion design, you know, um, fits for the vintage fashion. I go for fashion design. So I'm studying now. I'm, I'm senior right now. But in 2019, I got sent back home because of COVID. And when I was at home, I was just... I mean, I was hitting the bins. I mean, at that point, I love vintage clothing. I've been thrifting since, like, high school. Like, I remember watching, like, Paul Cantu videos, like, YouTube videos. If you know, you know how, like, cool that was back in, like, 2017, 2018. Like, that was the coolest thing ever on YouTube. Um, So I always watch his videos and be like, dang, like, what even is a single stitch shirt, whatever. I had the normal route, you know. I got into that. Sent home from college, started hitting the bins a ton. Um, and the bins was a great time. If you if you go to the bins, you know what that community's like. You know what that, like, fellowship is like almost. Because it's like you go to a bin and, like, you don't automatically are welcomed by. Again, back to the whole thing about vintage communities being, like, a little gatekeepy. It's the same exact thing when you go to a new bins. It's like, bro, who is this dude? You get look kind of like that, like, who is this dude randomly. That's very normal, you know. I feel like as that new person, the least you can do is just respect the space, respect the work that they've put in before, long before you even came there. Um, you know, uh, like respect it. And if you just keep coming around a little bit, I feel like they'll naturally, the community will kind of warm up to you. Um, also, like if you're just genuine with it, like if you just genuinely like it. And then, you know, I feel like a lot of times now, a lot of my binge guys have, you know, kind of complained about new people coming through and just like not even really enjoying like, or being interested in like the clothing aspect of it. Um, but just like being like, yo, like this is easy money, you know? And while it is like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can make money and flip it. Like I get that, but it's just kind of like, you know, people wanted to see like the future of what they're doing going in the hands of, you know, people who love it, I guess. Um, so I would, I went to the bins a lot, you know, grinding the bins for like a, a year and a half, like every day, five days a week, um, all day, all hours. And that was good. But then I had to go back to college eventually, you know? And so then I went back to college and I live in Atlanta now. Um, so, and if you know anything about Atlanta, dude, they have no bins down here. So, but at that point, once I moved to Atlanta, I had built up this network of connections who I could just keep buying clothes from, right? Cause all my time spent at the bins. So I have a bunch of guys who I, who like sell me wholesale. Um, if you have any wholesale stuff that you feel like you could sell, let us know, send us a DM. But, um, so yeah, like I built out that like network, keep hitting this pot, um, that network of people, which was huge. And, um, yeah, so we've been doing it for a while. We didn't even make the site until probably into like 2020, um, maybe 2021. It was April 21. Oh, my fault. So halfway through, almost halfway through 2021 is when we made the website. Um, and yeah, I mean, it started off real, you know, real bare, real, real bare bones, real minimal. Um, so that's taken upgrade, just like anything else. But um, yeah, and we just been kind of, we just been kind of grinding, kind of like doing our, doing our thing, um, you know. And then also with selling vintage, we've done a lot of like custom drops, like a lot of upcycling. Um, and that's been fun. 
that's been a lot of fun. That's like, I feel like that's just like me being into fashion design. Um, that's where that kind of comes from. My, I'm around ton of, like a ton of blank canvases I look at, you know, like you get jeans, you have these really cool pair of Levi's, but what can you do with them? You know, that's kind of my whole head. And um, so that started with the vintage stuff. I was just making a bunch of stuff and I'm like, oh, like what if I made these? You know where it actually started was, I don't know if y'all remember this, it's kind of still almost a trend. Um, but like those, those blanket hoodies, those like weaved, um, like blankets, those woven blankets, like knit blankets, um, with like the graphics on it. It could be like a random graphic, like a nature graphic of like a deer or something like that, but it's like a knit, like woven blanket. And that I feel like back in like almost like 2019, almost, um, a lot of people were wearing like those hoodies, like they would make them out of hoodies. They would make the blanket hoodies. Um, so that's kind of where it started. And even before the Spice Gossip, I was like doing garage sales in my, in my driveway in high school of like these secondhand clothes, you know, and I wasn't even necessarily worried about vintage. It was just like clothes that I thought were cool that I got thrifting that, that are just cool, you know? Um, so I've been doing it for like a while, even before Spice Gossip, I was just operating under different names, like very, you know, high schooler level. Um, so it kind of started with that. I made a bunch of blanket hoodies and sold those and, you know, people bought them up. So I was like, I got to keep doing this, you know? And once I started going to the bins, it just allowed me access to so many textiles, whether it be blankets, whether it be jeans, so many, so much of that stuff for so cheap. Um, and I just kept kind of like, just kept working at that and kept having ideas and whatnot and some ideas were good some ideas weren't good but i mean it's all about just starting it so that's kind of where we started that and if you've been following us for a while then you know like the flare denim is our thing like you know we do a lot of stuff with flare denim like this isn't the first flare denim drop this is just like another iteration of it um so yeah we've done we've done so many we've done like a, just a straight black flare denim drop we've done flare denim with like paint splatter on it that was like the first one we did we've done flare denim with like the patches on it that those did really well people really like those um that was like 2020 i think and those did really well Th those were those are fire i saw actually have my pair um and then the latest ones before this were like the overdyed flares that we dropped like in April or in like May of this year. So a couple months ago, um, we did those. Those also did really well. Y'all, y'all like those. And that was a tough process, dude. Holy moly, bro. If, if y'all dye clothes, if y'all do that, like at a, at, in like bulk, y'all know how like difficult that is. Like, especially just like trapping out of like five gallon buckets and like storage containers. Like if that's what you're dying out of, dude, it takes forever. It takes forever. If y'all know, y'all know. So, we don't know if we would die again. That that that's gonna be. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. So then. So then now we're on these these cool stripes. Um, if y'all been keeping up with the Instagram, y'all be seeing all the content that we've done. We've done. It's been super fun in marketing these. Like I feel like the content ideas that we have are really cool right now. And um, we're in a much more like creative space now um, than we have been in the last couple months for you know whatever reasons. But um, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun to do these. Um, I feel like they're sick. So if you've been keeping up, then you know all about it. You know the inspiration, the Hickory Stripe. This is our rendition of it, um, all that good stuff. Um, if not, if you haven't seen some of that content, go check it out it's on our Instagram slash TikTok. Um, but so yeah, now we're on these guys. They're dropping October 30th. I don't know when you'll be viewing this. Um, today it's Friday the 27th. So we're dropping these in a couple of days. But um, so yeah, so, those, so that's sick. That's a little bit about us. Um, we do the custom drops. Also, we have an interesting curation, I'd say. Um, it's kind of this, you know, people call it true vintage. Um, that's fine. We have a lot of 50s, 60s, 70s stuff. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely under the true vintage umbrella. That is super trendy right now. Um, but I would say we also have this hint of, like, Western wear. Um, super 70s-esque, obviously with the flare denim. But, like, we drop a ton of bell bottoms, a ton of, like, tight tees, um, ton of, like, flowy button-ups. Like, super 70s-esque, I'd say. I'd say, like, Western 70s, like, Cowboy 70s. I, I'd probably say that's more of our curation, not necessarily just, like, true vintage. Because I feel like a lot of true vintage is old workwear, you know? And it's, like, f like 60s and before workwear. 
Um, and while that's dope, like we, we have some of that stuff and it's whatever stuff we get of that is sick and we're hyped on. Um, but it's not, it's not like our whole curation, I'd say. Um, and then of course we have like the eighties and nineties stuff, um, that we drop too. That's just cool. Like just cool to wear. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit about us. Um, you know, obviously the true vintage scene is super trendy right now. Um, everyone loves True Vintage. Obviously, you have that like Durango Vintage Festivus going on. That's dope. I mean, that's dope to see for the community. No one's done that. Um, you know, I know some people who have gone to that. And yeah, it's dope. It's sick. I would love to go to that one day. Um, but it's super trendy right now. And it's really interesting because it makes me think about like how t shirts, band tees, rap tees were like so in the spotlight a couple of years ago. Like that was the thing, right? And, um, and just like, I, th I think it's interesting how it changes. And now it's a lot on True Vintage, I feel like. It's a lot of people wanting old Levi's and like wanting old work pants and wanting old sweats. Like all that's really, it's a really interesting turn um, that fashion's kind of, or vintage fashion has kind of taken. Um, I would love to know like your thoughts on that. Like why do you think that is, you know? Um, Obviously, it's just a sign of the times. Things change. That's what happens. Um, but I think it's really interesting. I'm happy that it is kind of catching trend because I feel like when I first started going to the bins, people were throwing that stuff back. You know, they weren't necessarily into that stuff. And I would scoop it up immediately. I'd be like, bro, this, this is fire. Like, why are you tossing this back? Um, so, like, now it's interesting to see how everyone really wants it. It's kind of good for us because like that's what we sell a lot, you know, and it's good that people want it. It's good that it's trendy. It helps us, but um, I don't know. I mean, fears of being it being like oversaturated, too many people, it gets boring to people. So like this curation that we love and hold so dear to our heart is like trendy right now, but hopefully it doesn't like in the next couple of years get untrendy because we'll always love it and we'll always want to sell it. Um, so I mean, it's a lot of interesting perspectives, a lot of interesting angles you can look at with any trend. You know, whether you like trends, whether you hate trends, it's, it's honestly, it's very, it's a slippery slope. And um, there's a lot of angles you can take on it. A lot of angles you can take on it. Um, so that's a little bit about us. Um, again, if you have any specific questions, we'll, uh, we'll try to, the more we do this, like put the little question thing up on our story. Or like, if you have a question, just DM us. Just DM us and then like, if it's a good question, we'll feature on the podcast. We'll be like, yo, this person sent us this question, it's really good. So we'll do that more, but that's a little bit about us. Um, you know, I feel like for all the new followers, you know, we're not just a, like a vintage fade. Like, you know, I feel like we're different in our ways. I feel like we go about content differently um, just cause we make a lot of it, you know? We make so much of it and put ads on it and stuff like that. I feel like we take a different approach than just like the normal reseller, you know? Um, so kind of the next thing I wanna talk about is the custom drops the past ones. I've, I've shed some light on it. I've shed some light on the other flare denims that we've done, but we've also done tops too. Um, we, we have done the, if you know, if you know some of these, if you know all of these respect, if you know all of these respect, um, you've been around for a while. It's clear. If you have any of these order items, yo, shout out to you. Shout out to you. I would love for you to like tag us in someone. Like, that'd be dope to see. But we did like the Levi's. We're not, yeah, actually they were probably all Levi's. But like the denim jackets with the patches on it and they have like that race stripe um, with like the different tones of denim on the side, like vertically, those were sick. We got like 30 of those. Those are, those are really cool. Um, I think, no, we don't have any more. We don't have any more now, but those are dope. Those are dope. We did those a while back, a while back, probably like two years ago. Um, we've done, we've done flannels kind of like rebuilt flannels, like you know how needles, the brand needles, like the rebuilt flannels. We've kind of, we've done that. Um, have we done that twice or once? We've done, we've done it once with the American flag. Yeah, just, once. just once, yeah. So it wasn't exactly like the needles rebuilt. Obviously we were heavily inspired by the needles, rebuilt flannels, but like we kind of took our spin on it, um, you know with the with the like the rebuilt American flags on them that we that we done out of like flannels that we sewed out of flannels. Um, so like that was kind of our spin on it. Obviously still heavily inspired and y'all ate them up. Y'all ate them up. Y'all y'all really liked it. So those are dope. Um, then we did the Wonder jackets not too long ago. Like beginning of this year, end of last year, like around December time. 
Um, not too long ago, we did those. Those are cool. We actually still have a couple. Um, I have to still have a couple. We did them on military liners and hunting jackets. Um, and basically just, there were, just did a bunch of patches on them. We have a ton of patches. That's kind of like our thing. Like we definitely like a lot of patches. Like that's our day. Our identity is like flare denim and like patches, um, denim and patches. Like that's really, that's really what we kind of like pride ourselves in when we find ourselves just dabbling in and enjoying a lot. Um, so we've done those. So if you have any of those items, respect, shout out to you. Um, that's always cool to see. You know, people, like, post a fit pic and, like, tag us in something that, like, we dropped, like, two years ago. Like, that's super sick. Are you kidding? Um, kind of brings me to my third point about how we even drop vintage and stuff. Um, obviously, it's different now than it was a couple months ago. And before that, it was different than it was a couple months prior to that. Like, it's a constant change that we that we do and we find ourselves in because it's always like, okay, well, how can we make it better? Um, and obviously sourcing changes, like how much we can drop, obviously you want to drop more, you know, like quantity, like you want to just keep giving <coughs> like your followers and customers, like more to look at, like that's just natural, um, kind of like the growth of it. But, um, so it probably has, part has to do with that with just with a bunch of other things too. Like we want to keep it fresh. Like we want to, we don't want drops to get stale. We want to keep it like exciting when we drop something new. So um, a way to do that is just switch up how we drop things, you know. So right now we're on the 45 Special. So basically what that is is um, 45 Special is like a gun name. It's like a name for a gun. Um, and it fits our branding because we're, with, we're into this like Western kind of cowboy theme, you know, like high noon, whatever, um, like kind of theme. So we're like, oh, this fits perfect. Like this name fits perfect and we're doing 45 items. And we didn't necessarily want it to be – super like clear like really transparent of what that is like we kind of wanted to raise the question of like what are they doing like why do they keep calling it this you know because like any speculation is good speculation any buzz is good buzz um so it's basically just 45 items basically just we just drop 45 items every three days that's our current rotation right now um it's been going well we've been doing it for a while a couple months now um and it's been good but, but before that we done we did a, we did the 30 shooter um, similar kind of thing. The name was inspired by like the slang term of like a six shooter, like a revolver, um, but just adapted to 30 shooter. That was just 30 items, basically the same exact drop process. But we actually didn't do it every three days. We did one, it was like Monday, it was Thursday and it was Saturday, I think. Or Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Something like that. It wasn't, it was like, we were looking at it more towards a week, like week by week basis, not like every three days. Cause like every three days you're going to have like bleed over into the next week. You know, sometimes it'll end on a Sunday. Sometimes like a drop will end on like a Wednesday and you'll drop something on a Sunday. Like, so like it'll bleed, but we kind of like that cause it's kind of like an organic kind of thing. It's like, you know, not necessarily as super scheduled, which I feel like if something is too scheduled, it'll feel too, you know, math equation-y. You know, um, so like we, it, it's, it's good. We do it every three days, but the 30, the 30 shooter, we did it. It was kind of whatever. And then before the 30 shooter, we started the 30 shooter, the beginning of this year, actually, probably like around January. Um, but then before that, if you know, you know, for the 30 shooter, we did daily drop, like daily drops, daily outfit drops is what we called it. And we dropped five items a day. And basically we, we, we didn't have as much sourcing, um, so this is a way to kind of like stretch out our items and like really be like, hey guys, like only look at these five items today. And, um, and that was fine. Like we did that for a while. The whole idea too was like to not overwhelm the customer because I do feel like sometimes if, you know, if your favorite vintage page drops something and it's like, oh, like 200 new items to add to the site. It's like, whoa, bro, like 200, 200 is crazy, bro. Like I'm not going to look through all of that right now and what I'm doing, you know, like what if you're just in the middle of your day, you want to go take a quick scroll through the website. You're not going to look at all 200 items. So that's kind of like, that was our idea with like, oh, we're going to drop five items, right? So if someone sees it on their phone, someone sees the Instagram post, oh, brand new five items. Um, they'll be like so easy to look at, just five items, just five quick items. Um, so we did that for a while. And, um, and then before that, yeah, before that even, we, I don't even know what we did. 
I think we were doing daily drops still, or like buy daily drops. Every other day we would drop like 12 items or something like that. Um, it's kind of a similar thing. Not that many items. We wanted to really spotlight the items that we drop, lower quantity. But then we also did like a curated drop. We were doing those. Curated drop would just be like um, Russell hoodies. Or curated drop would be like flared jeans. So we would like curate those, build up like 20 of them, 20 of the same thing, like varsity jackets. Like we would get 20 varsity jackets and then have a curated drop around those. And that was good. But then we just felt like we were kind of reaching. Like it's hard to constantly, because we were doing those every other week, I think. Um, and it, it was it was hard to kind of have like the same exact product in abundance like that. Like it's hard to just get 20 varsity jackets. Like those kind of those things kind of accumulate over time, so to just have twenty and save twenty up, right? It takes a little bit. It's a little harder. So we found ourselves like reaching for these topics, like, and they were getting kind of vague, and then it was just ending up as just a big drop. So we're like, okay, well, what are we even doing here? So I mean, so respect if you've been around for that. Respect if you remember that, because that that's been a while. And then before that, I mean, what we did? I I really don't even know what we did. I think we just dropped random. I, I think it was kind of like sporadic, like brand new items on the website now, which is fine, but it's just like, it didn't really have, didn't really have like a marketing theme to it, which is something that we moved more into. It's like how we market what we drop, you know? I mean, as y'all see, like we do, we blow our Instagram up with content, you know, hoping that you guys see it. Because also the Instagram algorithm is crazy, dude. Like we can post something and like literally, we have 16,000 followers and only like 500 of you guys see it in like 12 hours. It's like, what's going on so like that's why we also put so much up because we want something to stick we want it to like we want all you guys to see it but it's just hard with the instagram algorithm and they just switched it up dude like they just switched it up over these, like, these last couple last week or so maybe in a little before that maybe maybe it's been a couple weeks but they just switched it up and it's been crazy to try to figure that out um so if you're not seeing a lot of our posts you know uh that sucks, but try to, I don't know, maybe like interact with the post more or like just check our Instagram every now and then to see what you miss. Cause like we drop 45 items every three days, you know, constantly check our website. Like we have really cool items that we drop, um, every, every three days. So don't miss out on those for sure. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like what we, it's kind of all we had to talk about. Um, again, send questions in. I'm going to check the Instagram. Um, I'm going to see if any of y'all have swiped up with a question. I don't know if y'all have or not. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, look, we have, we have one question. Um, this question, yo, I would love, <laughs> I hope you see this, whoever, whoever, uh, asked this question. Only 56, only 56 people have seen the question post, so. I'll do it in advance next time, but if you have a question, just send it to us. But this is pertaining to the flare denim drop that we have coming up. Um, this is from Pisces Graveyard. Shout out to you, bro. Featured on on the little on the pod, dude. Um, he said, "What type of colors for the denim you've been sneak peeking will come out? Um, what type of colors for the uh, for the denim you've been sneak peeking will come out?" Um, so he's basically asking like the colors of the denim that. They're all going to be dropped, I guess. I hope, I hope I answered your question. I hope I read it correctly. But they're all going to be dropped. Some are lighter color, like ones I have on are pretty light. Some are a little darker. But basically the biggest difference between the light and dark is that some stripes are going to be more prominent and then some are going to be more subtle. So think about the hickory stripe. Like think about, um, think about hickory stripe. Think about like HBT, um, like that fabric, you know, whether it be like the bluebell coveralls or like the military, like those real subtle stripes, like if you, when you get close, you can see like, oh, it's kind of striped, um, but far away, it just looks like a solid color. So like the darker jeans, they're going to be, they're just going to look like you have a pair of jeans on, I guess, but in, in like an interesting color. Like you'll be able to tell like those are a little different. Like those are not just jeans. Um, but then when you get up close, you'll be able to see the stripe. But then for like the lighter wash, you can probably tell like, oh, like they're like pinstriped or like there's some type of striping on them. Um, so yeah, I mean, they'll all be dropped. We have 47 pairs dropping. Um, waist sizes, I think the smallest one we have is like 29. We have like 129, we have a couple 30s. We have like a 31, I think. We have uh, several 32s, 33s, a lot of 34s. 
35, 36, 37, 38. Like we have a lot of those like bigger upper sizes. Um, we actually actually even have a size 40 and a size 39 too. So if you're a bigger dude, um, we got you covered because I thought when we dropped the overdyes, we got people who were commenting like, yo, like I, yeah, I don't have my size. Like y'all need to do bigger sizes. So that's something that we'll do in the future um, is like keep giving those bigger sizes too. But also like we kind of just like, I mean, it's hard to source a bunch of secondhand denim that while keeping sizes in mind, um, we just kind of, we just kind of get what we get almost. And obviously like I'm trying to get size like 32, 33, 34s. I feel like those are the most common size. Um, but yeah, we kind of just like, we're trying to get the sizes that pertain to you guys the most. Um, so yeah, so that's the size. They're all be dropped, 47 of them. Yeah, so hyped on those again, October 30th. I don't know when this will go up. I don't know when you'll even be watching this. Um, but yeah, they'll all be dropped on the website. Um, I don't know if we have any other questions. Probably not. Um, probably not. Um, but yeah, snap, dude. Turn up. I um, hope you guys have enjoyed this first podcast. You know, if this is something that you guys want to see more of, like, let us know somehow. I don't know how you'll let us know. Maybe you'll comment or maybe you'll, like, we're, like I said, we're going to be posting clips of, from this, just like little snippets on Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. So, like, just comment on those, like, interact with those. Um, if you want to see more, I don't, I know we're going to try to get, we can get this up on Spotify. Um, I'm trying to get the video with it on Spotify. I don't know how that works. Um, but also like YouTube, um, is solid. If you want to watch on YouTube, if you want to watch the whole thing on YouTube, um, get it on, what, what is it? Like, what does Apple use? Like podcast app on Apple or something like that? Or like Apple music? Um, yeah, we'll try to get it on everything now. I feel like that just makes sense. Um, but yeah, so if y'all want to see more of this, let us know. Again, sending questions. We have a ton of topics that we could talk about, you know. So many things that we could talk about. Like, we could do this once a week and just kind of go over, like, some of our favorite things that we've dropped. Um, you know, we can go over trends if y'all want. What y'all think is, like, coming up right now. Um, we could talk about trends. We could, we could talk about random things. We could talk about vintage in, like, other countries. Because I think that's really interesting, you know, uh, how America is just, like, the peak of vintage clothing. Like last last year around this time, I was studying abroad in France and going to some of the vintage shops they have there. I mean, it's nowhere close, you know. Um, it's nowhere close to like what American vintage is. I feel like over there, it's like a lot of '90s stuff and a lot of like Y2K stuff. I feel like that's their idea of vintage. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not knocking it in any way. I just think it's di I think it's really weird how it's different. Um, because obviously people still over there still really love vintage clothing. Like I know some guys, shout out to Immortal Rags. Those are the homies. Um, can't remember what country they're from. I can't remember. I, I almost want to say Germany or like, uh, or, um, Denmark. I don't know, but they're, they're dope. They have a sick curation. I think it's super unique for the, like their curation in, in Europe. But yeah, we can talk about that. We can talk about what we dropped, um, what we have coming up. Um, we have some other really cool custom drop ideas coming up. Um, we can talk more about that. We can talk about more about just like fashion content if you want. Um, yeah, we can talk about a bunch of stuff. So this is be really fun. I feel like we started something cool here. Um, we have a lot of cool ideas. And oh, also, if y'all wanna see people, we, we're in Atlanta, we're based out of Atlanta. Um, so if y'all want to see certain people in Atlanta, if y'all know people in Atlanta that y'all want to see, you know, like, you know, allow them to kind of like come on and talk, that would be tight. Tag them or reach out to them or reach out to us to let them, to ask them. Um, I know, you know, I don't know everyone in the Atlanta vintage scene just because I moved down here two years ago and it's pretty, pretty large. It's different than Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where we're from originally. Um, but I know a couple guys who I would love to have on here um, and just talk about whatever with the vintage. So that would be tight. So if y'all have people in mind that y'all would want to see on here, um, yeah, like let us know. Let us know for sure. Um, one last thing. 
before we sign off, I want to talk about the studio space, our studio space right now. So if you've been if you've been following us this last year, you know that we've had the studio space and it's been, you know, we have appointments available. You can make an appointment. People have DM'd us in the past and being like, hey, like I want to just slide through. Whether like, hey, like, do you have some stuff? Um, you know, it's what like whatever. Like they'll 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 just slide through, kind of like an informal thing. Um, and we've been doing some appointments, um, and everything's a little cheaper in person, by the way. But we've been we have a new studio space now. We've recently have moved the business, um, and we're hype on it. We're hype on it. We're slowly putting it together. Uh, it's a bit of a mess right now, but next week we even want to have it like operational. And stuff like that. So um, we're, yeah, we're hype on that. We want to start doing that. Look out for that stuff. Look out for. We want to start throwing some events here. We want to start really advertising um, the possibility of y'all making appointments and come shopping in person. Because I know that's a totally different experience. Um, shopping in person and shopping online. Like shopping in person is just so so cool. You can try stuff on. You can see everything we have. I mean, like we have. Over a thousand active items on the website right now, but like I ended two thousand over two sorry over two thousand. We have over two thousand active items on the website, and like that is so difficult to look through on the website. Like scroll down, hit next, scroll down, hit next. Like that is so difficult to do, and it's just way cooler to look at in person too. So um, look out for that. Look out for updates on that. We want to start again doing appointments soon. Um, Y'all can swing by um, with you, with your friends, whatever. We want to start doing that. Um, and just like getting more of an in-person like presence. Um, but yeah, so that's coming soon. Check that out. I think about that. I mean, we covered a decent amount. Um, so yeah, look out for the custom drop, the, the Hickory Stripe Flare Denim. Those will be going live in a couple of days. Obviously, look out for Vintage. We, all, we never stop dropping that. We're always going to keep doing that. Um, but yeah, that kind of does it. This kind of wraps up podcast episode number one of the Despise Gossip podcast. Um, yeah, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening.